Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm really excited to do. I'm going to be telling you all about my tippy top favorite drugstore affordable makeup products. So I love to chat about affordable makeup. Uh, I feel like I've been doing a lot of high end on my channel recently. I've been talking a lot about Sephora, doing Sephora hauls. Uh, I've done some ranking new foundation videos and almost all of the foundations I've been talking about have been high end. And I was like, we need some affordable makeup up in here. So I decided to do all my most favorite products that are either found at the drugstore or are affordable products. So I hope that you guys are excited for this video i'm really pumped for it why don't we go ahead and get started okay i did want to say that i did film this look it is on my instagram i'm using the ColourPop uh frozen collection frozen 2 collection the elsa set so we got like the blue going on and this is the lip from it if you want to see how i got the look again i will have that listed in my description box it is over on my instagram march beauty word one product that i really love and i'm very proud of because i have hit pan in this powder product which is not norm for me I'm very light-handed. I have a larger collection, so when I hit pan in my powder products, I'm like, so this one here is from CoverGirl. This is the Vitalist Healthy Powder. Now, I also wanted to mention this one right now because I think this whole line is getting discontinued. I did confirm with a CoverGirl rep that the Healthy Vitalist Foundation is being discontinued because they are coming out with a new foundation. I didn't ask about the entire line, but could be a possibility. I know that I can still find these on some retailers online and I've seen like a few products here and there from the Healthy Vitalist line at like Target and CVS but in case it goes away completely I want to tell you about it right now because I think this powder is so good and look at that pan that I've hit in this powder. I have the shade uh, Buff Beige which is 725 and I really enjoy it. This is definitely my favorite affordable pressed powder. I have some high-end and luxury powders that I I enjoy too but for affordable powders this really is my number one and just in general this is one of my top face powders i can use it to set concealer on my under eyes i can use it to to set my entire skin it's not too heavy it doesn't look too powdery or too cakey on me and it just does a really good job of smoothing out my skin it helps to mattify a little like especially in the summers when i'm you know get a little bit more combo and i feel like my skin's trying a little bit more combo anyways as we sit here right now um, which is different for me so I feel like I've been dipping into my powders a little bit more and this powder is just so good I highly recommend it like I mentioned I was doing quite a bit of ranking new foundation videos and I was talking about like high-end and luxury foundations like really really pricey foundations and I do think there are still some really good options at the drugstore again I didn't want to overload every single category with a ton of different products I really wanted this to be like to be top faves but one product, it's not a foundation, but it's still a complexion product. And I love this baby so much. Oh no, you guys are going to be so mad at me because the cap is dirty, but real life. This is from Neutrogena. This is the Healthy Skin Anti-Aging Perfector. So I have light to neutral 30. It says a moisturizing retinol treatment with sunscreen. It has SPF 20 in it. So I received this over the summer. I did want to say, I know the FTC has changed the guidelines now, so I need to try to remember to do this. Every, I try to do it as often as I can, but I'm really going to try my best now. The CoverGirl powder I was sent in PR a while back. Still really enjoy it. This uh, I was sent in an Instagram campaign that I did with Neutrogena a while back as well, but I instantly took a liking to this product. We're supposed to say now if we've received something or if we've bought something ourselves. That's something I've always tried to do, but I guess now it's like a new FTC like regulation. So I'm a... I'm gonna do my best. I try to be as transparent as I can. If I use affiliate links in my description box, I have an asterisk next to it and I have a thing saying like anything marked with an asterisk, that's an affiliate link. Like I try my best, okay? But um, like I say, Neutrogena Healthy Skin Anti-Aging Perfector. I just enjoy this product so much. When I run out of this, I will definitely be going and picking it up. I, I got this at Target when I was doing the campaign with Neutrogena and I especially really loved it in the summer because it's kind of it's basically like a tinted moisturizer and I would use it so much if there was days where like I was just running errands or maybe I was just like chilling hanging out with friends and I didn't feel the need to have a full face but I still wanted to even my complexion out and just help my skin look a little bit better but not needing to go like full foundation wise this is what I kept turning to and I still I, I still keep turning to it. I just think that it's such a nice product. It evens out my skin tone. It gives a really natural appearance, yet it's 
just slightly dewy at the same time which because I've had dry skin for so long that's what I really look for um, in my complexion products so I loved the finish that it gave it really was just like it made me have that my skin but better look and that's what I appreciated about it. It's super lightweight. It also does have um, a retinol in here, which can help with anti-aging and all of that. But it's not like a super powerful retinol where you have to be careful of like how often you're using it and, and all of that. There's the SPF 20 in here, which again, I wore this quite a bit in the summer and I really liked that. Um, I was having a little bit of, you know, it's not the only SPF that you should wear, but a little bit of something in my complexion products. And I'm just so impressed with this product. Like, highly, like, highly, highly, highly recommend uh, if that's what you like with your preferences. If you're like a full coverage type of girl every single day, you wouldn't have a need for this. But I really got on with this. I was very impressed. The foundation that I have on today, this is from Revlon. This is the Photo Ready Candid Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation. I originally received this in PR from Revlon. They sent me a few shades and I tried it out and I liked it so much that I was sent it in um, kind of like the the winter months last year where I'm not as tan and the shades were working pretty well for me but then as the the weather got warmer and I'd be in the sunshine more and I got a little bit of a tan going on I couldn't really wear those foundations unless I was going to mix it and really work with my bronzer you know all those really hard steps I was like it's affordable I'm just going to go out and buy my correct shade so I did purchase this shade myself which is 240 and it's what I have on today and I think this foundation is so nice so I got it sent to me I went out and purchased another shade and I just like it so much so 240 natural beige is the one that I have uh, it says it's a medium uh, to buildable coverage I would agree with that. I think it's I think it's a really nice medium coverage, which typically is my sweet spot when it comes to foundation. You can build it up a little bit, but it's not going to be too full coverage. It's a really nice and natural finish. Uh, again, sometimes it can lean just a little bit more on the dewy side, which again makes sense to why I really enjoy this one. Um, you have just a, a pump on it, and I think that's a really nice foundation. Nice and lightweight on the skin. Doesn't look too heavy on me. You definitely have more coverage with this one with, than you do with the Neutrogena. So I have actually like three different options with my complexion products. This would be kind of like that more medium category, but I think this is a great one. I would definitely recommend it. And then the last one I want to talk about is this one here from L'Oreal. This is the Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation. This one also has SPF 25 in it. I have the shade 450. So this one, I really enjoyed. This one is going to be more of like the medium to full coverage foundation. So if that's your preference, um, you know, I would recommend this one. Once again, we have the pump on it. The bad thing about the pump is that it's such like a tiny little pump in here that it's almost impossible not to get foundation on. Uh, this product and I really do like this. I think it's a very uh, long wearing foundation like it just doesn't really move a lot. I actually wore this to the American Influencer Awards that I went to because I knew it was going to be a long night. I knew that I was going to be nervous and you know all that. I just wanted my makeup to stay in place. So this is the foundation that I wore. I think 450 is a really good shade match for me. Uh, again it's a very natural coverage foundation. This one can lean a little bit more on the matte side but I think it's a very natural coverage foundation. Uh, again it is very long wearing but it's still lightweight on the skin it still doesn't look too heavy it doesn't look any like mask like or anything like that so I really do get on with it so it is very long wearing but one thing I want to point out is that one of the ingredients is uh, the denatured alcohol which can dry out the skin a lot of skincare or uh, um, I don't want to say a lot but there are makeup products and skincare products that do have that ingredient in it like a lot of setting sprays have it because basically it is kind of helping to prolong your makeup so you know there's certain foundations that do have it this one does i wouldn't recommend this for like every single day type of use um what i find myself reaching for this foundation the most for is something like you know i might be a regular now at award shows so who no, i'm just kidding i'm just kidding but like the award show was kind of like the exception to like what i normally do but i knew i needed really long wearing makeup that day um like weddings things like that but if i'm just doing a, you know a, a quick makeup look or I'm just running out for like the night with friends and I'm not too concerned about it I wouldn't want to wear this on like a super regular basis if that makes sense because of that ingredient and because it can dry out your skin and if you do have dry skin that can hurt already but it's just kind of one of those things that like I try to do things in 
balance. Like I, I'm, I don't feel like I'm overly perfect in any single category, but I try to have a balance. Like if I eat three s'mores in one day, I try to also not go through the McDonald's drive through that night, you know? But it's like I'm not gonna cut s'mores out of my life that sort of thing. So um, that's just another foundation I really enjoy, but I did want to mention that just so that you are aware of it so you can make your own decisions. So there's that. So speaking of setting sprays, one that I really enjoy is from Morphe. This is the Continuous Setting Mist. This actually is a setting spray that does not have the denatured alcohol in there. Again, a lot of them do. The All Nighter Setting Spray is a super popular setting spray, one that I love, one that I've purchased myself, um, but it does include that ingredient because it really does help prolong your makeup. So this one doesn't have that ingredient, but one thing that I really like this spray for is to really melt the powders on my face. If I'm wearing a lot of powders, if I'm wearing just like a lot of makeup, a lot of powder products in general, and I feel like it looks like I have a lot of makeup going on, you can just spray your face with this one. I like the sprayer on it and all of that, but you can spray it and it really helps melt things down. I don't think it's the best setting, the best setting spray to prolong your makeup and keep your makeup really intact which again is probably because it's missing that ingredient. But again, just pointing these things out to you so you can make your own decisions. And, uh, but I, I still really like it. I have purchased this myself. I've actually repurchased it and, and all of that. And I still think that it's a really nice product, especially for when I'm just feeling a little too powdery. Let's talk about concealers because I actually have three concealers to talk about and they're all like newer-ish to the market. They're not like brand new, but they're not like you know, they didn't come out like five years ago type of thing. And I just think that all of these are great. I really like trying out concealers. I really love finding concealers that I think are fantastic. That was my dog. I really like finding concealers that I think are fantastic, but also if you can find great ones that are affordable, <laughs> winning. The first one that I have here is the one that I've had the longest. This is from e.l.f. This is the 16 hour camo concealer. This is a $6 concealer. And I think this is fabulous. This really got a lot of hype when it came out. I bought it myself because so many people were raving about it. I was like, I gotta see what's going on here. I have the shade Medium Sand and it works pretty well for me. You have the oversized doe foot on this one. And I just think that it's a great product. It's a full coverage concealer, yet it's not too drying. It's still really easy to blend out and it just makes my under eyes look really nice. I don't feel like it emphasizes any of the fine lines or wrinkles that I have on my under eyes. I'm 32 years old. So I do have that issue and sometimes certain concealers, especially I find if they're more on the drier formula, which is actually what I'm wearing today and I don't feel like my underwears are looking that great, but I'm trying to get a review together for a new concealer. But I don't think that this e.l.f. concealer or any of these three concealers really do that and I just think this is fantastic and again, it's $6, which I think is awesome. Another concealer that actually reminds me a bit of the e.l.f. one, I just don't think it's as, like the e.l.f. is a little bit of a thicker formula. I think this one isn't quite as thick, but it still gets really nice coverage while still being easy to blend out. This is from CoverGirl. This is their True Blend Undercover Concealer. Once again, when this released, I heard a lot of people starting to talk very favorably of this one. It also has the oversized doe foot just like the e.l.f. one does. This one is $11.99 at Ulta. Drugstore prices, I'm not saying the price on everything because they can really vary from Ulta to Target to CVS to the brand's website. There's like th There can be a lot of differences in the price, but... On Ulta, this one was $11.99. Um, this is the most expensive concealer that I'm talking about out of the three, but again, reminds me a lot of the one of Elf, of from Elf, just a little bit of a thinner formula. Coverage is still really great on it though. I'd still definitely really recommend this one. It's a thinner formula than Elf, but it's almost just a little bit on, I'm gonna say the drier side, but not like, it's not like a drying formula. I just think the Elf is a little bit more hydrating. You know, that's what I'll say about the difference between those two. And then the other one I want to mention, this is from Milani. This is the Conceal and Perfect Longwear Concealer. I purchased this one myself because so many people were raving about it. And I really wanted to try a new affordable concealer. So when I was asking around and looking for recommendations, so many people recommended this one. And I said, I'm going to go for it. So I believe this one was $9.99 at uh, Ulta Beauty is where I purchased it from. The CoverGirl concealer, I have Classic Beige, and then the Milani concealer, I have Light Natural. This one has a smaller uh, applicator here, and it's flat on both sides, and I kinda like it. It's, it's nice and small, you can get like close up in there, or all that good stuff. This one, I really do like the formula. This is a really nice and long wearing concealer, and this is one where I almost feel like I don't even have to set it. It's, I typically 
set my concealer every single time I use powder, but I feel like with this one, the formula is just really good on it, and I feel like you almost don't have to. If you're someone who doesn't like to use a ton of powder products, you're out and about and you forgot your powder, I feel like with this one, it's like, oh, huh, it's okay because it's such a nice formula. Again, it's nice and thin. Um, it's more full coverage. It's really easy to blend out. I mean, it has all my favorite properties of a concealer, and it's why I wanted to mention them with these three. This one is my newest concealer to me, but since, honestly, the first time I tried it, I was like, yep this is where it's at so highly would recommend all three of these concealers uh, that you can find at the drugstore speaking of covergirl and milani i really like mascaras from both of them so i have the covergirl exhibitionist mascara this one is just really nice this is another one from the first time i tried it i was like ooh, i like this quite a bit you have the wand on it that's a little bit like the Too Faced better than sex like it kind of it's almost kind of like the hourglass wand it's a little bit bigger but i think that this is a really nice formula i don't think that it transfers on you it makes my lashes thicker it makes them a little bit longer and i just appreciate this one i'm always on the hunt for mascaras that don't transfer and i feel like this one has a really good wear time on it so i definitely appreciate that and from Milani, the Highly Rated Mascara. I've talked about this one quite a bit. This is actually done for. Uh, I just shipped out a package to Wands for Wildlife. They were taking donations in October, and this one was underneath my calendar. I don't know why I had it at my desk for some reason, but this did not make it into my package, and I feel really silly about that. This one here from Milani I, I think is really good, but I have it here to show you instead of having to insert a photo, but really like this one. The wand is thinner, um, so it's really easy to get it at the base of the lashes but again makes the lashes um have really nice volume have really nice length and i think this formula is even like a little bit a little bit more long wearing than the cover girl i can really wear this the entire day like several hours and i don't get transfer which i think is fantastic so definitely would recommend both of these mascaras and one item from CoverGirl, it's kind of like a non-sexy makeup product but wanted to mention this this is their lid lockup this is their eyeshadow primer I think it's great. A lot of times I use concealer as my eyeshadow primer. I don't have super oily lids. Typically I actually have drier lids, but um, I a lot of times I'm not reaching for a separate eye primer, especially if I do face makeup first and it's just easy for me to put the concealer on my eyelids. But a lot of times if I am doing my eyes first or if I know that maybe I want my eyeshadow to last even longer, I'll use the CoverGirl Lid Lockup and I think this is really nice. It's a really easy um, formula to blend out on my eyelids. I think the eyeshadows hold to it really well and I really like it. Again, kind of like a non-sexy makeup item but one that a lot of people like to use so i wanted to mention it another one from milani Whew, we got <laughs> got a lot of the skin brands in here just wait till we get to color pop and then we're then we're gonna have a lot going on but this one here is from milani this is the sunlight silky matte bronzing powder in 01 i purchased this myself because a lot of people were raving about it and i was like i'm gonna go ahead and check that out and i think that this is a great bronzing powder i actually use this a lot for contour because it's a little bit more on the cool tone side again this is 01 it's a little bit cool tone so i'll use like a denser smaller brush and just really get it into the like hollows of my cheek to really contour but i can also use a fluffier brush especially now that i'm not as tan i can use a bit of a fluffier brush and use it to bronze you can use this as eyeshadow um i just think that it's a really nice product and i feel like i'm gonna have it forever i have used this one so much and it looks like i haven't made a dent in it like even like the indentations on here barely look like it's been touched like it's it's just crazy but i think it's a great bronzer i hear a lot of people talk about this one too and i definitely would recommend uh one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas is definitely ColourPop. I really like the ColourPop eyeshadow palettes. I highly recommend them. They're really affordable. They have a ton on their website. They have quite a few on Ulta Beauty. And one of my absolute favorite palettes is the Sweet Talk from ColourPop. And this just became available at Ulta, which has me so excited. I do have a video ranking ColourPop palettes. It was from a while ago. So um, not all of my newer palettes are in there. But if you want to see some of my thoughts on them and hear me rave about the Sweet Talk, I will link that video down below. I really like this one. I almost always take it traveling with me. I love the shades inside. I actually really do like the Super Shock. And mine has not dried out. And I've had this since I think it was spring of last year that this palette came out. There's some glitters in there. Not like the glitters that are now coming out in the, in the palettes, but ones that are... I believe these are eye safe. I don't think that there's anything on here that says 
that they're not. So, um, yeah, I just really like this We Talk palette. I really like the ColourPop pressed eyeshadow formulas in general. You can do palettes, you can buy singles, you can create your own palettes on their website. They just really do have one of my favorite uh, affordable eyeshadow formulas. And <laughs> I felt a little bit bad because going through my collection, like when I was planning to put this video together, the majority of my lip products that I love, that I recommend, that I repurchase, that I use all the time, that always end up in my purse, are high-end. There's just certain categories that I tend to lean high-end in and certain categories that I really like for affordable products. Lip products, I've noticed, I really do lean towards high-end, but one product that I definitely want to recommend is another one from ColourPop, and I really like their lip liners. I've been a big fan of their lip liners for a very long time. The Sweet Talk palette was sent to me in PR. I've purchased a lot of ColourPop palettes on my own though. That's how I first started purchasing these palettes was by myself. Okay, alrighty then, moving on. So their lip liners, I purchased all of the lip liners myself. Um, in one of my recent ColourPop orders, maybe like two or three orders ago, I purchased like three or four new lip liners. I really, really like their lip liners. One of my favorite shades is Oh Snap, which is this tiny little lip liner right here. I think that it's great. Um, the other two that I just pulled out, I have a little one and Lumiere. I have BFF. I have Beeper. I really like their lip liners, like I said, and they're nice and affordable. I have repackaged the lip liners recently too, which I think is great. And I really do like these, especially for an affordable lip product. They're nice and creamy, so you can wear them all over, which I do this with lip liners a lot anyways, which I think it's, I think it's another reason why I've been wearing lip liners so much more, is because I can line my lips and then fill them in with a lip liner and just be done with it. I do that with the Beeper lip liner quite a bit too, and I do it with Oh Snap because Oh Snap is kind of like a your lips but better. It's a really beautiful color, but because the formula is so creamy, it's really easy to fill your lips in. The only downside when you have a really creamy lip liner is sometimes it's not as long wearing and especially with lining my lips sometimes I notice like my lines not being as precise after like several hours of wear whereas something that's not as creamy maybe more of like a wooden lip liner pencil doesn't do that doesn't really move so that's the only con with them that I wanted to mention but still I still really like the formula I continue to repurchase these for myself. I think that they're really nice. All right, we'll come back to some other products from ColourPop, but I wanted to mention this primer because I think this is a really nice primer. Primer, again, is one that I feel like I tend to gravitate towards high-end primers. I have a lot in my collection. I use a lot of the same ones over and over, but this one from Catrice, this is the Prime and Fine Aqua Fresh Hydro Primer. Fresh it up, moisturizing with bamboo water. This is a really nice primer. I would definitely recommend it. I know a lot of people, myself included, have said that this seems really similar to the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer, which is like one of my top favorite primers. I think that it's great. And this one I want to say is like around like $6 or something like that at Ulta. And I think that it's really nice. It's the primer that I use today. I use this quite a bit. Um, especially because I typically have had drier skin, just something that's really nice and moisturizing or hydrating can really help kind of prep my skin for foundation. If I'm wearing something that pulls a little bit more matte or something that's a little bit more full coverage, I feel like pairing it with this primer just really helps with my particular skin needs. And I think this is a really good one. I definitely would recommend checking that one out. And then some highlighters that I want to recommend. I did a video a couple months back. I think it was in August when I was looking it up. Uh, it's um, products that are affordable that I would pay a high-end price tag for. I'll link that down below. There's definitely a couple of repeats that you've seen in this video, but there's some other ones that, that I mentioned in there. And I mentioned this highlighter in there, so that's what made me think of it. So again, if you like this kind of topic and hearing about affordable makeup, that's bomb. I'll link that. You can check it out. But this is a highlighter from Pixie. This is their Glowy, Gloss Glowy Gossamer Duo in Delicate Dew. So you have two different highlighters in here, and I think both of these shades are really beautiful. You have more of like a like a champagne on one side and then a pinky highlight on the other. You can wear them separately, mix them together. Um, I'm not a fan of like highlight palettes as much anymore, but even duos I think are really pretty. Uh, I like the option of wearing them alone or mixing them together, but it's not like so over, like it's not like a four or five pan or even eight pan highlighter palette that it's like, ah, oh, how can I wear all of these? Or not all the shades are going to work for me. I think duos are really nice. And this one from Pixie, I think is good. This is probably one of the most expensive products that I'm mentioning in this video because Pixie kind of is like, 
it's not like super affordable but it's also not high end but it kind of like toes that middle line uh, but you can also find the brand at Target and sometimes there's deals and specials going on there but I just think that it's a really nice highlight and I've been recommending this one for a really long time this was sent to me from Pixie Beauty a while back but I've been recommending it for a while and then um, for highlighters ColourPop I also think has really great highlighters one that I kind of like initially fell in love with is one of their Super Shock highlights in Flexitarian. I'm watching my channel for a while. You know, I really enjoy Flexitarian. And these are like $8 for the Super Shock highlights. And I think that they're really nice. Flexitarian is so beautiful. And I actually do want to do a swatch because I have one that I think is kind of a Flexitarian dupe. So I'm going to go ahead and swatch these on my hand so we can see what they look like so this here is the super shock flexitarian it's very blinding if you like a more intense highlight i would recommend this one because you get you get a lot of get a lot of boom in there i did purchase this one myself um and just really enjoy it but ColourPop recently did a, another uh, collaboration with the Disney Designer Collection, and this was in their Cinderella Collection. This is the Horse and Carriage Highlight. So this is a pressed highlight. I think this one is beautiful. This is $12, so it is more expensive than the Super Shock, but I know not everybody totally loves the Super Shock formula, and by that I also mean me. Like, I'm not a huge fan of the Super Shock eyeshadows. Um, I don't mind the highlights, but I definitely prefer just like the straight pressed formula and this one It just feels so soft and so creamy and I feel like these are really look at that Like I feel like these are really really similar shades to one another to one another um, the the flexitarian maybe is just a little bit uh, Like I'm, I'm gonna say the horse and carriage is a little bit more opaque just a little bit just by looking at the the swatches on my hand Flexitarian just has a little bit more of a sheer formula, whereas, but look, but like they're so so similar to one another, so it just depends. Um, you know, I really like this one because it has Cinderella on it, and I love Cinderella, so that kind of pulls to me. This one was sent over to me from ColourPop, but I wanted to mention them because I feel like they're similar. If you don't like the Super Shocks, or if you don't like pressed and you would prefer a Super Shock. I think these shades are really close to one another, but but I did just mention this one in my makeup monthly and put it in my favorite section because I think that it's beautiful. Once again, super blinding and just so pretty. I think ColourPop has a really nice highlight formula. Two more items from ColourPop. I know. I do I really do like ColourPop. Not everything is is a is a hit for me though. There's products that I definitely don't enjoy there's products that I think are just fine from ColourPop but the ones that I think are really good I definitely want to mention them so I already talked to you about the eyeshadows all of my eyeshadows up here are from ColourPop and I think that they're great but I also really like their pressed blush formula I bought these myself these were in collaboration with Kathleen Lights we have I need or we have I need spaces over here and Lunar Hazard is over here and I think that they're a really pretty formula and again for more affordable if you're just looking for a nice long wearing blush I think these are where it's at. I used to enjoy Lunar Has It even more but I keep reaching for I Need Space recently. Um, it's just a really beautiful like pinky neutral. It has a hint of shimmer to it. I think that it's a really nice formula. I think it's very pretty so I wanted to mention those blushes. And then finally, if you are a false lash girl, I would recommend the lashes from ColourPop. Now these are new. ColourPop just recently started putting out lashes. They're $8 for the lashes, which I think is a really good price. They're some of my most affordable lashes that um, I still really enjoy wearing them. Again, I just mentioned these in my Makeup Monthly too, so I'll have that video linked down below. The style I really enjoy is Queenie because they're not too over dramatic. They're not too much. They don't give too much of an oomph, but they're not super natural. Um, I'm not trying to like fake anyone out that I'm not wearing fake lashes. They just kind of have that like perfect in between for me. I think the band is really thin. It's very lightweight. It's very easy for me to work with. And I've been really enjoying these from ColourPop. So again, I don't wear false lashes as much recently. I definitely wear just like mascara more and rock my natural lashes. But if you love lashes or you just don't want to spend as much money on lashes, I mean, lashes can get 20, 25 dollars for a pair of lashes these are eight and i think that they're really nice okay lastly i just wanted to finish it off with some brushes whenever i'm talking about affordable makeup i always mention these two brands because i just think they have really great brushes that is real techniques and also uh, moda brushes i love the moda metallics line from from moda brushes they make some of my favorites they have a whole variety face brushes eye brushes i think that they're bomb i would highly recommend them i am an affiliate with moda i have purchased the brushes myself i actually purchased the brushes before i was ever an affiliate with them and i really recommend 
recommend them. Um, I do have an affiliate code if you purchase on their website. It is Samantha and that will save you some money. Uh, and then also Real Techniques. Again, I started purchasing Real Techniques before I ever got PR from them and uh, just really love their brushes. Again, they have face brushes, eye brushes. They do have a really nice sponge, Real Techniques does too, and I would just highly recommend both of these brush lines if you're looking for something that is a little bit more affordable. But other than that, that is going to wrap it up for today's video, chatting about all my tippy top favorites that are affordable or can be found at the drugstore. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know some of your favorite affordable products and definitely in the comments, I would love to know. And other than that, if you guys did enjoy this video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up. I hope that you also consider subscribing before you go, and I will see you in tomorrow's video.